right, so let's look at gear. So I'll start with the camera first. Um, I'm even a minimalist with camera gear and lens selection. Um, when I'm shooting weddings, uh, I only usually only have two lenses. I have a 50 and I have a 35. I don't like super wide. I don't like the look of it, um, especially when a bridesmaid gets to the very edge of it. It's like, you're not gonna make her happy. Um, so I've, I've, 35 is about the widest I, I like to shoot. If I have to shoot a wide scene, then I'll just do a, a, a like two or three frame panel of it. But even um, the 50 alone, um, I mean, all, every photographer I know in the world shoots a 70 to 200 millimeter mm -hmm. at every wedding. And that's, I mean, I'm just, and, and you. I, I do love, I actually love the look of 72 and I love mm -hmm. the look of 85 and eventually I might get an 85. Um, <laughs> the, but my philosophy um, when I started to shoot is I, my first philosophy is to be very different. Right. Um, and the only way to be different is first to stereotype photographers. Right. Um, I know what they're shooting with. <laughs> right. And then I, I know where they're shooting and how they're shooting. So then I avoid all that. And then by default. That's so genius. If I don't shoot with an 85, my stuff's not going to look like everyone shooting with 85. And you know what's weird is, um, and this is the honest truth, there are two other photographers previous to meeting you that I have admired their work and always loved. And I've always looked at it and thought, how do they do that? How do they make, why does it look like that? And I was raised, uh, same thing, RB67s, RZ67s, mm -hmm. and I understood lens and, and, and depth and perception. But um, both photographers, eventually I had the opportunity to ask them what lens they shot with because I knew it had something to do with lens and compression. And both photographers shot with 50s. Mm -hmm. um, both of them said they only shoot 50s. They're both fashion photographers. Mm -hmm. Um, and it blew my mind. So I have many a times tried to take my 50 and I've tried to have that whole theory of I'm going to be different, I'm going to try different. And for whatever reason, I never see the world the same way through a 50. Yeah. And it, it, it literally fascinates me. How do you, because a 50 is very similar to what your real, mm -hmm. your, what your eye sees. Close, yeah. It's basically close to what your eye sees. So how do you see the world that way? Well, you know, it's, it's after you shoot with a particular lens for a while, you know what it's going to look like on the back end. Mm -hmm. And so when you pre-visualize, I want to shoot this, you're already, you're halfway there. If you've never shot with 50 or you're used to shooting with 85 or 72 or, or shooting along <laughs> telephotos, your mindset to knowing what it looks like. So anything you shoot with something other than that, it's going to feel off base to you because right. you're not going to get the result that your mind's pre-programmed to pre-visualize. And I, and I so badly want to be cool and I just can't, you know, I just, I you, think you you're pretty cool. Well, you default <laughs> back to what you're comfortable with. And yeah. so that 70, I know the compression, I know the compression rate, I know what the background's going to look like. And I love, but everything I've ever fallen in love with, it was shot with the 50. And I think, mm -hmm. and even your work when I, that episode one, when I was going through it, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And now I know why. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, of all the images you've seen, probably 95% was 50 wow. and 5% was the 35. Wow. Um, I usually only break 35 out with, if I have to get just a little more or when I'm like gunning down reception images and dance stuff. But what was interesting in episode one, you talked about being a portrait artist. Mm -hmm. So with portraits, um, typically, uh, you know, we talk about portrait starting at 105 to that 200, 105 being kind of the 85 to 105 being mm -hmm. that perfect portrait. So, so as much as you feel like your strength is portraits, it's interesting that your lens choice did not, you didn't force yourself into a portrait lens. Mm -hmm. Well, as, like I said, I, I can still, I'm defaulting cause I know what, my competitors use right and i'm making it i don't want that look uh, um otherwise i'm not i'm because then i have to compete with them i don't want to compete with i don't want to compete with them right um and actually if you look at my stuff well they're shooting 85 and they're getting very very they're shooting wide open very very soft mm -hmm. that bokeh or bokeh however you want to pronounce it <laughs> um it, it's everyone likes that and everyone shoots for it and if you look at my stuff and we'll go back to it you'll see a lot of stuff is sharp all right. the way through. So I have a lot of depth and sharpness all the way down where, because I know, because that's what I started with, um, all the super out of focus stuff in the background. Um, that's what everyone's shooting now. And I avoid that mostly as a style difference. It's incredible. Well, it's obviously an incredible marketing, a marketing tool for you as well, because your work is exceptional and it certainly stands out. So that's mm. fantastic. So 50 millimeter, 85% of the time, did you say approximately? Uh, about 95% of the time. Wow, 95% of the time and 5% 35. And 5% 35. That's amazing. So, now, that's so incredible. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. It's my lens selection. Like I said, these, and 
Um, I also like these particular lenses because they're not very expensive. So if I drop them, I'm not <laughs> going to cry, um, which is very, very important to me. I don't want to cry. I don't want to buy a, a $1,500 lens and whoops. I so, totally get that. A couple one. hundred bucks, okay. <laughs> I can deal with that. Um, but big lens dropping just make you cringe. So.